Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Dragon Family. This is Study Time with Palak and today is really really interesting topic is Abul Tabul. So today we are going to discuss about Abul Tabul but not all the poetry is I mean, I'm going to tell you about all the poetries, but not in this video. This is just an introduction video in which I'll be, uh, I'll be telling you about the authors, uh, poets, and the genres, and every small details you need to know before reading this Abul Tabul, the weird and the absurd. So it was written by Sukumar Roy or Sukumar Ray. You may call Sukumar Ray or Sukumar Roy. It's the same. It's just a matter of pronunciation yeah let's begin so sukumar ray who was born in 1887 and died in 1923 was a bengali writer and poet from the indian subcontinent he is remembered mainly for his writings for children so sukumar ray was a writer of for children he wrote for uh, children's poetries and books and stories etc he is remembered mainly for his writings for children he was also the son of upendra kishore rai chaudhary and also he was the father of the famous indian filmmaker satyajit ray so, as you can see, he was a very famous people. He was a very famous person. They were famous people. Sukumar so Ray wrote for the children's magazine called Sandesh, started by his father in Calcutta, right from the time of its first publication in 1913. The poems in Abul Tabul, most of which first appeared in Sandesh, were composed during the period 1915 to 1923. Now, this was the definition of how the poet wrote it, who was the poet. What is the meaning of Abul Tabul? How did Sukumar Ray came up with the name Abul Tabul? So, Abul Tabul is a Bengali sentence. These are Bengali words which means the weird and the absurd so it's weird it had some absurd and weird poems inside of it that is why it is known as the weird and the absurd abul tabul it was originally the name designating a section within sandesh magazine so it was the name designated for the sandesh where many of these poems were published so you see if you don't understand still let me tell you abul tabul is just like a cover it's just a title inside of it there are poems which have other titles it doesn't mean that abul tabul is a poem abul tabul is a collection of poems so 39 poems and 7 untitled quatrains can be tracked back to having first appeared in Sandesh. 7 other poems making up the balance of the collection known as Abul Tabul were selected by Ray from perhaps previously unpublished manuscripts to form part of the final collection. Of these, Ray wrote the first and last poems, both originally titled Abul Tabul. Specifically for the collection possibly in 1923, before his death. Now, that was Sukumar Ray. Then why are we studying about Satyajit Ray? I mean, Sukumar Ray was the real poet after all. What work did Satyajit Ray did what was his contribution? So we are talking about him. Let me be clear. Satyajit Ray was the one who translated Abul Tabul from Bengali to English. Abul Tabul was originally written in Bengali. It was Satyajit Ray who translated it to English. So when you read about Abul Tabul, when you want to know about Abul Tabul, it is very necessary for you to know who Satyajit Ray was or what Satyajit Ray did. 
So Satyajit Ray, born 1921 and died 1992, was an Indian director, screenwriter, documentary filmmaker, author, essayist, lyricist, magazine editor, illustrator, calligrapher, and music composer. So in the very first line you can see how great of a man Satyajit Ray was. He was not only an Indian director but also a screenwriter, then a documentary filmmaker, then an author, essayist, lyricist, magazine editor, illustrator, calligrapher and music composer as well. So he was really a legend I would say. Satyajit's literary career was intimately associated with his father's and grandfather's work Sandesh, a colorful periodical for children, of course. One of the greatest authors of filmmaking, Ray is celebrated for works including the Apu Trilogy, The Music Room, The Big City, and Charulata. Ray directed 36 films including feature films, documentaries and shorts. Now it doesn't mean uh, uh, when it is written here shorts it doesn't mean YouTube shorts it means short videos, short stories, short movies like this not YouTube shorts. <laughs> Yeah, I know you guys already know about this, but I'm just making myself clear. Uh, you don't need to get angry on me. Ray's first film, Pathe Ponchali, won 11 international prizes, including the inaugural Best Human Document Award at the 1956 Cannes Film Festival. This film, along with Aparajito, in 1956 and Apur Sansar, the world of Apu, in 1959 as well, formed the Apu trilogy with um, Ray received many major awards in his career, including 36 Indian National Film Awards, a Golden Lion, a golden bear, two silver bears, many additional awards at international film festivals and ceremonies as well and an Academy Honorary Award in 1992. In 1978, he was awarded an honorary degree by the Oxford University. The government of India also honored him with the Bharat Ratna its highest civilian award in 1992. Now Sukumar Ray's nonsense words makes uncanny sense even today. Perhaps especially today. And maybe that is the reason why it has made its way into Calcutta University's English syllabus. So if you are a Bengali and um, if you are studying from Calcutta University's branch and you are also happen to be and you also happen to be an English honors student you know what I am talking about. So yeah, let's get further into it. Now we have come to the main points. Literary nonsense. So Abul Tabul was actually a literary nonsense. What is a literary nonsense? Literary nonsense or nonsense literature is a literature. It is a broad categorization of literature which balances elements. What elements? These elements that make sense. Elements that make sense with some that do not. Did you understand? Let me be clear. So, literary nonsense is a broad categorization of literature. It makes sense and at the same time it doesn't make sense. Yeah, let me go further. I'll explain to you, don't worry. With the effect of subverting language, conventions or logical reasoning. 
even though the most well known form of literary nonsense is nonsense verse the genre is present in many forms of literature so let's be clear about this nonsense verse um a nonsense verse is um, humorous or whimsical verse that differs from other comic verse in its resistance to any rational or allegorical interpretations though it often makes use of coined meaningless words that is it is unlike the ritualistic gibberish of children's counting out rhymes in that it uh, makes these words sound purposeful um let me also give you an example of literary nonsense like um jabberwocky um carol lewis famous poem jabberwocky so there were some verses in jabberwocky like um, beware of the claw of jabberwocky my son something like that so does it make sense to you who is this jabberwocky or what is this saying what happening etc etc let me give you an easy example um a princess laments it is the uh, from the princess and the frog i kissed a frog because i'd heard that it would turn into a prince that's not exactly what occurred and i've been croaking ever since so what happened actually is um, she thought well, she r- r- read the story about the princess and the frog and she thought that if she also kissed a frog she will become he will become a prince that frog will become a prince and instant the of the prince becoming uh, the frog becoming a prince that girl becomes a frog like she is croaking so what does it mean it means she became a frog does it make sense that's nonsense the first word which comes to our sense to our mind is it's nonsense so this is what nonsense verse is and nonsense literature is and the effect of nonsense is often caused by an excess of meaning we can't normally call it casually nonsense we can't casually call it nonsense because it is also literature does it has to have some meaning in it so here the excess of meaning causes this effect of nonsense its humor is derived from its nonsensical nature rather than wit or the joke of a punchline literary nonsense as recognized since the 19th century comes from a combination of two broad artistic sources the first and older source is the oral folk tradition including games songs dramas and rhymes such as the nursery rhyme hey diddly diddly and the second newer source of literary nonsense is in the intellectual absurdities of court poets scholars and intellectuals of various kinds these writers often created sophisticated nonsense forms of latin parodies religious travesties and political satire now today's literary nonsense comes from a combination of both sources it also contains oral folk tradition and it also contains sophisticated nonsense forms though not the first to write this hybrid kind of nonsense edward lear developed and popularized it in his many limericks starting with a book of nonsense in 1846 and other famous texts such as the owl and the pussy cat Lewis Carroll continued this legacy this trend making literary nonsense a worldwide phenomena with Alice's Adventure in Wonderland in 1865 and Through the Looking Glass 
in 1871. Carol's poem Jabberwocky, which appears in the latter book, is often considered quintessential nonsense literature. So the legacy just continues. The show must go on. And this is what is happening actually. Literary nonsense is still in power. Still in power. It is still popular. People like to read Alice in the Wonderland or the Through the Looking Glass. Of course, I have also read this with great passion. I have also made videos of this Through the Looking Glass. Now, what is the significance of this Abul Tabul for which we have been wasting our lots of time? So, Bengali readers were exposed to a new nonsense fantasy world by the poems in Abul Tabul. This selection offers the best of Sukumar Ray's world of poon riddled poetry. Although it was not understood at the time of its publication. Of course, when the poems were published, no one knew about it. I mean, people maybe knew about it, but they didn't understand what it means because it was really riddled and full of nonsense, of course. So, it has, um, like, uh, people didn't understand it and they thought, what is this? What are we reading? Why are we reading? So, that's it. Um, now, although it was not understood at the time of its publication, many poems in Abul Tabul contain skillfully hidden satire on the state of society and administration of early 20th century colonial India, mostly Bengal. Now, if you take one look at the poem, you won't understand its meaning because if you are just reading the poem like um, this is this this is that you will find it funny somewhat annoying mostly nonsense weird absurd but it has hidden meanings inside of it, stating the society and administration of early 20th century colonial India. What happened in the colonial India in the early 20th century? Now, embedding implied hidden meanings of a submersive nature in nonsense rhymes for children was Ray's clever way of subverting press censorship by the then British administration in India, which was paranoid about seditious and subversive literature. Now, you see, if um, Sukumar Ray just casually wrote about all the things about the British Empire, how the British treated Indians, he would definitely be dead. They will kill him. They would have killed him. Punished him. Punished him very severely. Thus, he thought of a way, a clever way, to write about those British Empire and not even telling them about it. I mean, even the British Empire were fooled by this nonsense. In analytical literature since 2017, the poems in Abul Tabul have been plotted on a timeline and compared with contemporary events, research having yielded plausible connections between historical events and the con commentary and satire hidden in many of the poems. Now, it says many of the poems, so maybe not all the poems have hidden satires, but most of them have. A significant perspective on Ray's Abul Tabul has been explored by Hirak Bhattacharya in his article entitled Rethinking Sukumar's Abul Tabul as a Multimodal Text. But the Charya contends that Ray's visionary mind accompanied the poems of Abul Tabul with illustrations. 
Such sketches invited unschooled learners to have a comprehensive understanding of the text without delving deep into the dynamics of alphabetical logarithms. The illustrations accompanying Ray's poem appeal to aesthetic sense of the reader and in a way creates a whole edifice of perceptual understanding of the poems, appealing all the sensory perceptions. In this way, Bhattacharya explores the multimodal aspect of the text that transcends the liminality of a text-centered approach. Now, that was all. Yeah, that was all. I know that was hell of a boring. You guys didn't enjoy it one bit. But yeah, it was very necessary for you to understand. It really is very important for you to understand if you want to continue Abul Tabul further. Because if you don't know what literary nonsense or literary verse is, or who wrote it and who translated it, and what was the meanings behind of it, you won't be able to continue further. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it even one bit. Yeah, whatever. So let's end it for today. Do like, share and subscribe. Tell me in the comment section down below how you liked it, if you enjoyed it or if you have any suggestions for me, any advices, I would love to take them. And if you have any difficulty, please ask me. I would be happy to help you guys. And that's all for today and time out.